I'm broadcasting live to you. Uh, it's about to be July 3rd, 2020. And uh, look, folks, we're like, uh, what, a day away from 4th of July. So here in the States, we celebrate Independence Day. Very important day. 1776 Declaration of Independence was established for our freedoms, our rights, our liberties. And we just give God praise that we get to continue to celebrate it in these end times. Yes, we're living in the last days. Make no mistake about it. Uh, and the day of the Lord is at hand. But we, uh, you know, we here at Open Your Eyes people anyway like to... Um, still remember the Lord in all things, including, in this case, Declaration of, or, excuse me, including, in this case, Independence Day. Amen. All right, listen, speaking of Independence Day, I want to share with you all a particular report here uh, coming in from BreakingIsraelNews.com. It says the following, Lunar Eclipse on the 4th of July, a warning to the nations, the nation of Israel, according to, to a 100-year-old prophecy. So I want to get right into this. Listen, folks, again, we're going to be celebrating New Year's, uh, not New Year's, we're going to be celebrating 4th of July here uh, in about a day or, or so from now. And um, along with that, it's going to be a, a beautiful full moon and a penumbral lunar eclipse, solar lunar, uh, excuse me, a lunar eclipse uh, that's going to, uh, you know, be a sign in the skies, according to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 21, verse 25. Also, the Word of God says uh, in the book of Joel, chapter 3, verse 3, Before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes, I will set signs in the sky and on the earth, blood and fire and vapors of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord our God. So listen, as fireworks will fill the night sky on the 4th of July, people will surely notice the changes taking place to the full moon, the first of the summer season, and it is slowly changing colors. Though the lunar change will be subtle, a 100-year-old prophecy warns that this particular eclipse, again, July 4th, 2020, this lunar eclipse that's expected to take place uh, is an omen that should the nations force the nation of Israel to give up any land in that nation, a foreign leader will pay with his life. Again, this is according to a 100-year-old prophecy. Okay, so here's a report. A lunar eclipse takes place when the Earth is between the sun and the moon, and the moon passes through the Earth's shadow. The 4th of July will present a partial penumbral lunar eclipse in which the moon misses the inner darkest part of Earth's shadow, and instead it glances the outer, less dark part of the shadow. This will subtly darken a part of the lunar surface. About 35% of all eclipses are of the penumbral type, which can be difficult to detect even with a telescope. And you have another 30% being partial eclipses, which are easy to see with the unaided eye. And of course, the rest, the remainder, the final 35% are uh, what's called total eclipses. So this particular eclipse, again, that is set to take stage on July 4th, 2020, over North America, over the continent of Africa, uh, and, and, and a few other areas around the world. Not, not the entire planet, we'll see it obviously, but some, some, you know, some main players, us being one of them. This eclipse will be entirely visible on July 4th through 5th. And the reason why it's from 4th through 5th is because it starts, for instance, uh, you, know, I get see, I, you know, I get to see it here from, from the state of Texas at um, a little after 10 o'clock local time. And then it ends at like 1.30 in the morning. So it starts on July 4th, ends on July 5th. And again, uh, you know, much of the Americas are going to see it. Uh, North America, Canada is going to be able to see it. Uh, actually, they're going to be able to see the eclipse at moonrise. Many people in the continent of the Africa will be able to see it. And Western Europe, some parts of Western Europe is going to be able to see a bit of the eclipse at moonset. So this is going to be very exciting. The eclipse will not be visible, though, in Asia, Eastern Europe, Northeastern Africa, or the northern parts of North America. The face of the moon will appear to turn a darker silver color starting at 11.07 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time, according to Space.com. The eclipse maximum will occur almost 30 minutes after midnight at 12.29 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Sunday. The time of the eclipse will occur earlier in areas west of the Atlantic. So, for instance, on the West Coast, the eclipse will likely only be visible at moonrise, which is about 9.45 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And the entire event will last nearly three hours. Now, the penumbral, excuse me, the penumbral lunar eclipse will be the final 
of three consecutive astronomical events con uh, constituting a complete eclipse season so far for the year 2020. The first one we reported on back on June 5th, 2020. A penumbral eclipse was visible in the continent of Asia, Australia, Europe, and Africa. So first it was their turn, and now on um, and now you know again on July fourth it's our turn. Also on June twenty first, twenty twenty, there was another eclipse. That one was called an annular ring of fire solar eclipse that was visible in the continents of Africa and Asia, including the Central African Republic that was uh, you know Congo, Ethiopia, Southern Pakistan, Northern India, and China. Fantastic. Come on. Again, those were three consecutive, uh, you know, con it was it three consecutive astronomical events that completed what's called an eclipse season. Now, apparently you have a rabbi uh, who is a rabbi of King David's tomb by the name of Yosef Berger on Mount Zion, emphasizing that a lunar eclipse can clearly contain a message from God. And he cited the word of God in Genesis chapter two, excuse me, chapter one, verse 14, that states the following. Hashem said, let there be lights in the expanse of the sky to separate day from night. They shall serve as signs for the set times, the days, and the years. Now this particular rabbi also noted that the interpretation of these signs will be essential in the days preceding the final redemption as God's intent will be expressed in the planet, in nature. Uh, and then, now please understand, we have the word of God here. Uh, you know, let's quote the, you know, the book of Joel, the prophet Joel, chapter 3, starting from verse 1 through verse 4. After that, in those last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. And on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they shall prophesy. Again, the sun will be turned into darkness, the moon into blood, before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord our God. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now the sun and moon are how God will announce uh, not only the end times, not only the signs of the times, but the soon coming day of the Lord. So everyone can see and everyone will, 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 will have the ability to understand by the Spirit of God. You know, I think of the portion of scripture in the book of Revelation where the word of God says, Every eye shall see the second return of Jesus Christ, even them that pierced him. Now, this particular rabbi, again, Rabbi Berger explained the following. He said, and I quote, This was also true before the exodus in Egypt, when all the Jews were given the prophetic ability to understand that it was time. It was time for their redemption. It was time to leave uh, Egypt. It was time for their deliverance. Unfortunately, even then, some chose not to leave Egypt. And we know the story, we know the account, I should say. Many of them wandered in the wilderness for 40 years until that generation died off because the Lord was not pleased with them. They were a murmuring generation. Anyway, uh, this particular rabbi continued, he said, A modern man does not understand how God appears in nature, how God speaks to us through nature, to the prophets. This was very clear. Now, this rabbi continued to refer to a discussion of eclipses in the Talmud, so, Sukkot 29. Now, again, I don't quote the Talmud here, uh, but to keep in context with the report, I'll share what is, is stated here, uh, which specifies that lunar eclipses are a bad omen for Israel since Israel is spiritually represented by the moon. If the lunar eclipse takes place in the east side of the heavens, for instance, this is according to what they believe over in the nation of Israel, those who are... Uh, you know, studiers and students of the Talmud uh, that, that, you know, they say that it is a bad omen for all nations in the east. And similarly, if it occurs in the western hemisphere of the sky, it is a bad sign for all the nations in the west. Again, that depends on where the lunar eclipse takes place, in, in the east or west side. Now, this particular rabbi cited Yaakov Moshi, which is a book of uh, particular insights, uh, and he, and, and, uh, you know, he quotes the following, If the moon is eclipsed in the month of Tammuz, a sultan will die suddenly and great troubles will follow. This is according to a quote, uh, in, you know, and, and, and it goes on to say, The eclipse will occur on the twelfth day of the month of Tammuz. When the moon is eclipsed in Tammuz, a king of Luazi will die suddenly and a great confusion will follow, leading to great problems. So this is again a 100 year old prophecy according to this particular rabbi now luazi is generally translated as foreign as seen in the book of psalms 
Psalm chapter 114, verse 1, you know, according to the Hebrew Bible, says the following. When Israel went forth from Egypt, the house of Yaakov, from a people of strange foreign speech. So according to this particular rabbi, he says, and I quote, this clearly refers to troubles for the non-Jews. He cited the Talmud again. The word sultan is not generally used. It is only used in reference to Arab leaders. And since the Muslims mark their months only by the moon, this seems to be a sign for them. Those who built the gold dome that sits atop the Holy of Holies. At the end of this section, describing the omens contained within eclipses, the Talmud states a disclaimer. When Israel does the will of the place of God, or excuse me, when Israel does the will of the place, God, they have nothing to fear from all of this, citing the prophet Jeremiah as a source for this. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 2. Thus said the Lord, do not learn to go the way of the nations and do not be dismayed by portents in the sky, such as eclipses. Let the nations be dismayed by them. So this particular rabbi went on to note that the lunar eclipse comes just a few days after the Knesset is going to vote on annexing parts of Judea and Samaria, which I have an update on. So I'll share that with you here in a moment. This particular vote comes as a result of a coalition deal between Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, and head of the Likud party, uh, excuse me, who, who is head of the Likud party, and his political opponent, Benny Gantz, head of the Blue and White Party. <clears throat> So as per the agreement, the government can pursue annexation of exactly 132 Jewish cities and towns and the Jordan Valley itself. This represents 30% of the West Bank allocated to Israel under the Trump administration's peace plan. The plan also conditionally provides for a Palestinian state on the remaining 70% of the territory. The land of Israel, they claim, this is according to Rabbi, the land of Israel does not belong to any man to give away. The eclipse is a warning to both the nation of Israel and the nations to remain true to the covenant and to the land. Because again, according to this particular report, according to the 100 year prophecy, it warns that this, this, come, this upcoming eclipse on July 4th, 2020 is an omen that should the nations force the nation of Israel to give up any land in that nation, a foreign leader will pay with his life. How many foreign leaders are on the planet today that want to divide the land of Jerusalem for gain, that want to give up areas of territory uh, for peace in the Middle East? Folks, there are so many. This is going to be very interesting. If a foreign leader actually pays with his life or dies because of this prophecy and the omen that many leaders and rabbis in, in, in the Jewish state, uh, you know, they not only believe, but they depend on. Very, very interesting report. All right, with that being said, I want to share with you another report, uh, you know, again, an update concerning the annexation. I just, you know, I, I actually did a very thorough report about a, a week ago or so on this, and I promised that I would give you an update, and so here it is. Annexation decision likely to be made next week. Now, July 1st was the first day on which the coalition agreement allowed Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu of Israel to bring sovereignty to a vote. Passed without any progress on that front as was expected. So Jerusalem and Washington are now expected to coordinate their decision on where and when Israel will extend its law on the West Bank next week. A source with knowledge of the talks between the side uh, who, who, who shared this on the report. July 1st, again, was the first day on which the coalition agreed, uh, allowed, uh, excuse me, there was an agreement, uh, again, just yesterday, that allowed Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to bring sovereignty to a vote, but it passed without any progress on that front, as was expected. Uh, according to the National Security Council head and security chiefs, they said, Netanyahu continues in talks with the Americans and had a discussion today uh, with, uh, excuse me, he had a discussion with the National Security Council head and, um, in the, you know, the, you know, the conversation was, was with regards to the framework of a number of discussions on the matter. More discussions will take place in the coming days. This is a statement from the Prime Minister's office. Now, in light of this, you have uh, the U.S. Special Envoy for International Negotiations, uh, Avi Berkowitz, and Scott Laith of the UN National Security Council, who headed back to Washington after uh, very specific meetings that took place with Netanyahu, alternate Prime Minister Benny Gantz, and Foreign Minister Gabi Ashkenazi. 
Now, Berkowitz is expected to bring his findings from the trip to uh, Jared Kushner, who is a son-in-law of uh, you know current President uh, Trump. Uh, senior now, now Jared Kushner's position is senior advisor to U.S. President Trump, who will then weigh in and present the situation to the president concerning this annexation. You have President Trump, who's not been directly involved in Middle East peace matters in recent months, being expected to make his final decision on the matter, which will likely happen next week. Similarly, Regional Cooperation Minister Ofer Okuna said that Israel will annex portions of the West Bank in July, but only after the president has made a statement on the matter. Israeli application of sovereignty will only happen after a declaration by President Trump, according to Akunis, emphasizing that this would be a new one that would be issued from the U.S. Now they're hoping to get a positive response from President Trump during this, uh, you know, during his, his, you know, you know, while he's still in his seat. Many there are talks now stating that President Trump is feeling a little, um, a little discouraged. He, that there's talks, and now you know these may be rumors, okay, that he may look to not even try to fight to remain president for this upcoming election season. So you know we're going to see very soon. Time will tell. We're clearly in an election year, but uh, make no mistake about it. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu is seeing all the earmarks of this, and he wants to take advantage of this annexation. Uh, with uh, the uh, the approval of the Trump administration before uh, the November election, so uh, you know again we're going to see what what's going to happen. But such a Trump declaration was initially scheduled for the end of last week, uh, but was then delayed, and Israel is now waiting for it to be rescheduled before it takes any action. Trump's counselor Kellyanne Conway spoke of an announcement on Israeli annexation last week that never happened. As for what Trump is likely to announce, it's been reported that he has sourced on Kushner's advice because his son-in-law and advisor has been too liberal and hurt him politically. The site quoted a source as saying the president wants no more of Jared's uh, stuff uh, and um, uh, says her Kushner is thought to favor a more gradual sovereignty move by Israel. The article focused mostly on criminal justice reform but allowed Israel to extend its sovereignty and is strongly opposed by the left's worldwide, which is one way in which it could appeal to Trump. Gantz's statement said that the government should only work on things that have to do with the coronavirus and the related, eco and the related economic downturn at this point uh, is not a deal breaker for the U.S. An American source stated, though they believe it would give the move greater longevity in the U.S. support when Trump is no longer president. And again, that's their concern is that uh, the time will be up uh, if, if, if they tr try to get an approval uh, from, uh, you know, a new president. And that, look, folks, that's a very real possibility. We may be seeing a new president uh, in, in the White House as early as January 2021. Wow. Even again, Israel's prepared for this. The government of Israel, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, they're saying, listen, we got to get the Trump administration support before Trump is no longer president. What do they know that many people don't? What is really going on? Anyway, the coalition deal allows Netanyahu to bring sovereignty to a cabinet or Knesset vote. Either one is enough to extend Israeli law to territory that was part of the British mandate for Palestine uh, or the Palestinian Authority without Gantz's approval. Now, it was still unclear uh, as early as last Wednesday whether Netanyahu would even seek to apply sovereignty to 30% of the West Bank stipulated in the Trump peace plan, including all settlements in the Jordan Valley or to even a smaller part of it. Gantz sought to limit the move to the major settlement blocks, but Netanyahu emphasized sovereignty over Bethel and Shiloh, both biblical cities that are not in the blocks, in a speech to Christians United for Israel this past week. He also had Akunis pushing back at reports that the Jordan Valley would not be included in an Israeli sovereignty plan. He noted that it, he noted that uh, as long as uh, he noted that it has long been planned to be part of Israel's sovereign borders, dating back to the Allen Plan put forward back in 1967, immediately after the Six Day War by Yigal Allen, who is the Israeli Defense Forces general and Labor Party leader, uh, who later served as acting prime minister at that time. Now, Kuna said, of course, it has to be in the sovereignty plan. It has to be in that peace plan. But you have many of the conversations between the American and Israelis sides have not been about sovereignty, but have focused on the Palestinians' own status. For instance, the U.S. has encouraged Israel to give the Palestinian Authority greater control over, over Palestinian parts of Area C uh, that would not be part of Israel under the Trump plan, though the IDF would still be able to secure those areas. Among the ideas discussed was not requiring IDF approval for Palestinian construction. 
You also had Ashkenazi, told, uh, he, he spoke to Berkowitz that he wants Israel to make more of an effort to negotiate and coordinate with the Palestinians in order to talk with Jordan, Egypt, and the Gulf states. Also this past Wednesday, you had Australia expressing its concerns for the first time over the possibility that Israel may extend its sovereignty to parts of the West Bank with this annexation in a statement from Foreign Minister Maurice Payne. Uh, Maurice is, is quoted as stating, and I quote, We are following with concern possible moves toward the unilateral annexation or change in status of territory on the West Bank. Folks, there are not many nations that are happy about it. Many leaders are, 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 are frowning upon this move uh, by, by Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Gantz. Anyway, Payne went on to say, the focus needs to be on a return to direct and genuine negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians for a durable and resilient peace arrangement as soon as possible. Uh, this particular Foreign Minister Maurice Payne, again of Australia, went on to directly express his view to Ashkenazi. And this was the very first public statement on the matter from the Australian government, which is very supportive of Israel, by the way, though former officials in the Australian Labour Party condemned possible sovereignty moves just in recent days. Uh, you also had Prime Minister, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson making a plea to the Israeli government not to annex parts of the West Bank and to instead return as well to the negotiating table. Johnson himself wrote the following, there is another way. He pushed for the renewal of peace talks between the Palestinians and the Israelis. Uh, Johnson went on to say, while I understand the frustration felt by both sides, it is our duty to take advantage of the energy of this moment in order to return another time to the negotiating table and to strive for a solution. This will demand compromise from both sides. Which, by the way, if you have not noticed, has not worked up to this point. And we've been trying for decades, okay? Anyway, you had the, bribe, uh, you had the British Prime Minister uh, stating, I still believe that the only way to achieve true and lasting security for Israel, the homeland of the Jewish people, is through a solution that allows for justice and security for both Israelis and the Palestinians. The only way, he continued, to achieve this is for both sides to return to the negotiating table. This must be our goal. Annexation will only distance us from it. Then you have Senator Bernie Sanders joining in on the anti-annexation um, uh, you know, letter, in this case, spearheaded by Representative Alexandria Cortez, threatening to cut U.S. assistance to Israel should it move forward with this plan to annex parts of the West Bank. So we see how a, Democrat, how, how a democratically led government here in the U.S. would... Um, I uh, have a disdain uh, with regards to this annexation. They would have, a, they would give absolutely no support to the Israeli government concerning this annexation. Uh, so you can imagine Benjamin Netanyahu's urgency on this matter and the hopes of a um, uh, a positive, uh, you know, feedback with regards to Jared Kushner's conversation with Trump in the coming, uh, say, day or hours, if if, if that. Anyway, you had um, a letter again that was moved forward, uh, uh, and and um, it's an anti-annexation letter. Bernie Sanders joined in. Representative Alexandria Cortez it may have been the one who started it, threatening to cut U.S. assistance to Israel should it move forward with this plan to annex parts of the, of the West Bank. Sanders is the only senator to sign the letter alongside 12 House Democrats, including Rashida Laib, Betty McCollum, Pramila Jayapal, and Ilhan Omar. Um, very interesting. Very interesting. Anyway, it goes on to say, uh, this is a, according to the report, Israel's annexation of occupied territory would be a disaster for international law, self-determination, freedom, and equality. Uh, this is according to Bernie Sanders. That was him stating that. He went on to say, I stand with uh, Ms. Cortez and House progressives. We cannot allow U.S. tax dollars to be used to violate Palestinians' human rights. Uh, there's a lot that could be said about that, seeing as that many Palestinians have been used to, um, you know, used as suicide bombers or, 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 or to hurt the Jewish people. So it's kind of a tit for tat here. But anyway, you also had a letter that was sent on Tuesday to Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, urging President Trump's administration not to greenlight the move yet, warning that it would lay the groundwork for Israel becoming an apartheid state. And I knew that was going to happen. I knew those words were going to come out based on the verbiage or the rhetoric of annexation. This is very interesting. French Foreign Minister Jean-Yves Le Adrian reiterated his country's position that an annexation decision could not be left without consequences, and we are examining different options at a national level and also in coordination with our main European partners. Very 
very interesting reports. Folks, Israel is a cup of trembling in the last days. I want to prove it to you in the book of Zechariah. Go there with me very quickly. This is all Bible prophecy. Signs of the times in the soon coming day of the Lord. Zechariah chapter 12, verse 1. I want to read it to you here. And it says, The burden of the word of the Lord against the nation of Israel. Thus says the Lord, who stretches out the heavens, lays the foundation of the earth, and forms the spirit of man within him. Behold, I will make Jerusalem a cup of drunkenness to all the surrounding peoples when they lay siege against Judah and Jerusalem. And it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples, all who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. This sounds like that 100-year-old prophecy that that particular rabbi, uh, you know, just, you know, stated that I, I quoted here moments ago on, on this broadcast. Very, you know, I mean, this is a warning to the nations. A warning to the nations. Again, it shall happen in that day that I will make Jerusalem a very heavy stone for all peoples. All who would heave it away will surely be cut in pieces, though all nations of the earth are gathered against it. You know, it's not God's will that any man shall perish, but that all shall, shall come to repentance. And that includes the people of Israel. We must preach the gospel. The day of the Lord is at hand. If you're not saved, get saved. Give your life to Jesus Christ. Jesus said you must be born again. He told us to Nicodemus, who was a leader. He was a teacher of the law in the nation of Israel. He said you must be born again to Nicodemus. Surely, if he wanted to impress the Jewish people, surely if he didn't want to offend the Jewish people, surely if the Jewish carpenter, who is the Messiah, who is the only begotten son of the Lord, God Almighty, who is a suffering, who was a suffering servant, who came over 2,000 years ago and is now the glorified Messiah, if he did not want to bring an offense to the nation of Israel or to any of his fellow brethren, he would have said, you know what, as long as you kept the law of Moses, all will be well. But no, he did not. He said, you will be judged by what you are placing your trust in. Moses, Moses will judge you. Moses, the word of, of, of the law that, that was handed to Moses on two stone tablets will judge you on that day if you don't believe that I am who, who I am. And they will cry out, well, who are you? Who are you? They were so, you know, be, you know, they were so bewildered. They were so confounded. The enemy of their soul sought to keep them in darkness. And so it is even in these end times. So much so that the apostle Paul said, listen, I, 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 I would give myself up for my own brethren if they could just receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if that, that, that spirit of stupor would just raise up off of them. If they would just receive the revelation and get knocked off their high horse the way I was and have the scales removed from their eyes, I would give my life. I, 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 would, I, 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 I would be, I would, I would trade places with them if it would mean that my countrymen would, would just receive the gospel of Jesus Christ, if they would just receive eternal life. But see, if you're hearing this word right now, you can receive. You can be born again. Your name can be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Please understand, there is no other way to receive salvation. There's no other way for you to get right with God. There's no other way for you to have your sins forgiven except through the finished work of Jesus Christ. Jesus went to the cross over 2,000 years ago as a suffering servant, as a Lamb of God that was slain from the foundation of the world. My friends, if anyone has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Jesus went to that cross and he took upon the sin of all mankind. He became, the, he was the very propitiation of all of our sins, the substitute, the perfect substitute and sacrifice for the Lord God Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth. And he died. And he rose again on the third day, defeating death, hell, and the grave. And because of what Jesus did for us, we can now enter we can now receive the gift of eternal life and we can be in right standing with God. We can enter into heaven in right standing with God. We're talking about God. I'm not talking about your neighbor or your boss. All of us want to be in right standing with our boss. All of us want to be in right standing with the spouse. All of us want to be in right standing with our friends. But not many people really give uh, to, you know, you know, you know, second thought when it comes to being in right standing with their creator, God Almighty, the one that they will see on the day of judgment. Let it be that you take that thought now. Take a thought for your life. Take a thought to say, wait a minute, you know what? It is, it is, it is, it is appointed to, uh, unto every man. It is appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. And I, I, I got I to gotta get my life right. And you, you, you confess. 
to God. You confess to Jesus. Jesus, I don't know how to get my life right, but I, I know, I understand you're the only way. So I give my life to you. Make it right. Make me a new creation. Write my name in your book. Make me born again. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. That's the only way. That's the only way. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Folks, I want to say thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's Open Your Eyes People broadcast. As always, it is a privilege and a pleasure to bring to you all the Word of God, breaking world news headlines, matching Bible prophecy. I know, you know, again, we're going to be celebrating the 4th of July here in a day or so, and, and uh, so many places are shut down. It seems like, you know, it, out of all the times that we should be celebrating our freedom, uh, you know, this should be the time, especially in light of what COVID-19 has done to wreak havoc uh, uh, to, to so many around the world and instead we're kind of caving into it and that is to me wrong. Uh, we should be taking the bull by the horns and riding this thing out and celebrating our freedoms and instead so many places are closed down, so many celebrations have been suspended around the U.S. So I just pray that you all be blessed and God bless you with your own personal celebration of this Independence 2020, our first independence in this brand new decade, in this beautiful year of 2020. And I still call it beautiful because God is in it, regardless of what. COVID-19 will not make or change my decision about how good God is. God is good, and I give him praise for all things. So remember that. But just be blessed this, this uh, you know, this holiday, uh, you know, weekend. Stay safe, have fun, and... Um, God bless you. Listen, visit my website, learn more about my ministry, www.openyoureyespeople.com, www.openyoureyespeople.com. While you're there, uh, you know, browse around, take advantage of what we have. Uh, we are a full-fledged, uh, full-time evangelistic ministry, and we're actually celebrating 10 years. So, you know, uh, maybe you want to, you know, celebrate with us and, uh, you know, maybe you know, make a donation, become a monthly partner, help support it with a financial donation. A, a donation of congratulations for God's faithfulness. That would be awesome. Seriously, donate. Log on to my website again, www.openyoureyespeople.com. We have a mailing address as well. If you'd like to mail us, that would be pretty cool. P.O. Box 218, Shirts, Texas 78154. Again, P.O. Box 218, Shirts, Texas 78154. Until the next broadcast, may you all be richly blessed. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.